Hey everybody and welcome back. So what we're going to do uh, this evening is we're going to talk about your uh, motor setup, your electronic speed control setup, and your battery setup and demystify what some people think is voodoo witchcraft with electric motor setups. And just to be really transparent here, electric motors can be the, one of the most confusing parts of radio control models that I've ever been a part of. I've done it for 12 years now and it is not easy to learn how to do some of this. But if you learn how to use some of the tools, it does make it easier. So what I'm gonna do is as I get started here, basically when we're, when we're wanting to, when we buy an ARF, the motor's already sized for it, the prop sized for it. Normally they try to put the right size prop for the scale. But if we're taking um, like a friend of mine, scratch build a P40 kit, uh, I mean a model, that he had pulled off, like enlarged the plans a couple of percent, like to get a 61 inch wingspan P40. Basically, it looks just like a top flight from the 80s, the, the balsa kit. But him and I went through a little exercise to get that propped right and it worked out perfect. And I'm gonna talk about that toward the end of this. But if you're scratch building something or just building a foamy, it can get really confusing on how we actually know how to put the the proper components together to have an efficient system that will get a long flight time and and have thrust power all that stuff and not damage the equipment okay so what i'm going to do is real briefly we've got a model airplane we put a motor speed control and battery in there it's going to look like one of these usual suspects okay one thing about electrics that is kind of misleading is everybody goes oh electrics are cheaper if you're flying a 40 or 60 size model it's almost a straight wash when you look at the motor battery speed controller versus the uh, glow motor all the stuff you need with it the glow fuel the starters all that stuff it's almost a wash but once you start getting up into anything of like, I don't know, a, um, a 60cc equivalent or bigger, electric's more expensive than gas. Um, I always joke it's in between gas and turbines. It's not cheap. I mean, some of my 188-inch um, plane has about $2,500 worth of components in it just to fly it. I mean, that's the motor, speed controller, and battery. So uh, before I get too far into this, I want to talk about my sponsor, RTL Fasteners. Um, if you go to their website and use code DA30 and purchase more than $30 of their awesome product, you will get, uh, I'm sorry, more than $50 of their awesome product, you will get 30% off. And they got really neat little uh, kits that if you need your uh, bolts and nuts in your shop or at the field, it's a really neat company and I really suggest you go visit and look at it, okay? So now let's get into this and I'm going to make this bigger. So... What we're looking at right here is my MSL-1, okay? And when I first built it, it was for gas. And if you've watched any of the stories, you know that it shook it too much at idle. So I put it in my attic for a couple of years. And then one day I was talking to somebody about electric and they said, there's a big enough electric motor to fly it. So with the help of Hacker at the time, Castle and Thunder Power, we came up with a rough idea of what would fly it. And at that time it was 100 kV. And I want you to remember that for later. Um, a 160 amp speed controller and 10s in parallels that's called 10s 2p okay if you look hang on a minute if you look right here you'll see uh, the uh, first circle there is 180 kv to the right of that is 5000 watts is the maximum that that motor is supposed to handle below that is propeller at a 28 nine and a half and in on this calculator which came out almost exactly the same as my testing on the airplane because i have telemetry i ended up with 4950 watts which is close to the 5000 but my amps was only 142 amps so i wasn't using anywhere near all the amps i could out at speed controller but if i put a bigger prop or a bigger pitch i would go over on the watts and that's not what you want to do so I hated the fact the 28 inch propeller looked like a toy propeller on it. So what I did was I ended up going with a Hacker A100, which is 150 uh, kV. So I went down. Anytime you want to go bigger in prop diameter or uh, basically thrust, you want to drop in kV. So if you look to the right of that, that motor was good for 7,000 watts. 
So if you look, I had a 32, um, well, it says eight and a half, and I've got 32.10 down there. I can't remember what prop it was that I tested on it, but it was uh, 6,105 watts at exactly 160.6 amps. Now, the Castle Speed Controllers I've ran, this went up to 176 amps and never blew it up. So that 160, even though the chart here says it's over, it, it's, it's irrelevant to me because I it's not going to blow it up. If you look at the second dial from the left, it does say my mixed flight time is only 3.8 minutes. That's not accurate. I was getting anywhere from seven to eight minute flights out of this flying around at like a quarter throttle, not having any issues at all. Now, keep in mind, now that I had a known uh, propeller, motor, ESC, and battery setup, when I went to go to my MSL2, I just plopped the exact same thing in there, except I did go down to a 3285 prop. If you look, basically nothing changed. So I think on the other one, I did have a 3285. Uh, uh, that would make more sense that the nothing changed between the amps. But I want to show you this project. Now, I haven't started this, but it's designed, and a friend of mine's actually built the kit. Um, well, my drawings are not a kit, but they're just really rough. But this is a T28. And I wanted to experiment with the new motors, 8028-100. Now, this is an insane motor, everybody. And I am absolutely dying to find out how it really works. But if we go to the next page here, You'll see that I've got 300 circled. I'm gonna put a 300 amp Jetty speed controller on this setup. If you look to the right, it says 15,000. This motor is designed to run at 15,000 continuous watts. 22,000 is the burst, basically. I'm gonna have a 3616 three-bladed propeller on it. It's gonna pull 10,148 watts, and it will use 241 of the 300 amps available. Now, keep in mind, this motor could fly my ultralight, I think, <laughs> but um, I can't wait to start testing this and doing all of this, okay? Uh, but essentially, now on the right, it says peak watts 30,000. That's what's on the new uh, website is 30,000, but on this calculator, it said 22,000, but it doesn't matter. I'm never going to peak at that high. Um, I think my peak will be 15,000, but my continuous will be 10,148, okay? So... What I want to talk about now is uh, my Project P40. This is my buddy's, and it's a 61-inch span, 606 uh, uh, square inches. Um, basically, it's just a little fighter plane. But what we started out with, well, he, he started out by going to a calculator, and he got the setup that he thought it would fly right. And if you look on the right hand, far right-hand dial, it says pitch speed, and it shows 100. That basically you can get about 75 or 80 percent of your pitch speed, which means the airplane would fly somewhere around 75 or 80 miles an hour. Okay, I've not seen an airplane that is aerodynamically clean enough to get close to like 95 percent of the pitch speed. And if you don't know what pitch speed is, it's how fast the propeller is actually uh, theoretically moving through the air. It's 100 miles an hour for the pitch that it's turning. If you look at the rest of these dials, these dials all look pretty good. The, the problem he had is the airplane just, uh, he, he, he didn't like how sluggish it looked. Um, I thought it flew fine, but it had a two-bladed prop, and it just looks silly with a two-bladed prop. So he calls me up and says, hey, Damon, I like the way it flies. I wish it had a little bit more oomph, but I've got to put a three-bladed prop on it. So what he did, now look, I want you to think for a minute. This motor on there right now is a 650 uh, kV motor, okay, 650, which is a lot higher than the 150 I had on my monstrosity that was turning a 32-inch prop, okay? 650 kV turning a 13-inch two-bladed prop, and it worked pretty well. So he went to a three-bladed 14-inch prop, and then if you'll notice down um, here under the motor maximum, go to the third dial and go down and you'll see it says 100, uh, it says 69.48. Okay, well the electronic speed control he has is only good for 60. So now he's over amping his speed controller. So he calls me up and says, Damon, what am I gonna do? I said, you gotta lower a KV, you gotta go lower KV. 
He goes, well, this is a 60 size rim fire. I said, okay. I said, do they have like an 80 or a 90? He goes, yeah. And I said, could you use this engine on something, this motor on something else? He goes, sure. I said, you need to go uh, down in KV. So he said, okay. So he went out and bought a lower KV. Okay. He went from the 650 down to 500. Okay. His pitch speed is a little bit slow on the right. Okay. I mean, it, it, it did come down to about 70, I think it was like 79 or, oh yeah, it says 76 right there. So his pitch speed did come down. But the thing is, look at how much his current went down. It went down to 36. So now he calls me up and says, Damon, my current's only 36 and my pitch speed is down. I said, well, the pitch speed doesn't bother me because I never fly planes fast, but you, did you go up a cell on batteries? He goes, well, no, I didn't even think about going up a cell. I said, well, anytime you drop KV, you can, at least from my experience, add a little bit of voltage. So what did he do? He went from a four cell to a five cell and bingo. He has a awesome scale, 14 inch, three bladed prop. He's got a prop speed of 92, which means the plane's gonna fly around about 80 mile an hour, which for him is fine. I think he was more interested in seeing what the three bladed prop looked on it. If you look at the amps now, the amps are a 52 out of the maximum 60. The watts are 918 out of a maximum 2000. So if you're going to go to a larger diameter prop or put more load on the motor, you don't want to put more battery because you can, in theory, over volt or over amp. I mean, over amp or over watt the system. But if you drop KV, then you can increase the voltage. Okay, now I'm saying this in really generic terms for novices, people wanting to get into this. If you're an expert at this, I may not be saying this 100% right, but I know it freaking works because I've done it, okay? So now I want to talk about the all the people that talk about, oh, if you drop voltage, I mean, I'm sorry, if you add voltage, you're going to drop amps, and that is not right. So I call this Watts Matter. So here's an 8S, 80 amp speed controller, Hacker A6016L, 3100 uh, 3, watts is basically uh, what is the maximum you should run it. I tested, now these are all tested, I tested this in my shop. Um, 2312 watts were 1486 and I pulled 52 amps. Now that's out of an 80 amp speed controller and the 1482 watts was out of a 3100 watt hacker. So without a doubt, I definitely am not getting anything out of this system that I could go. So I went to 10S now and tested it. And this was really the perfect sweet spot for it. ADM speed controller, 3100 watt motor, I had a, third, a 2312. I got 2665 watts, which is really a sweet spot. And I had 76 amps out of 80 amps. Okay, that's because I went up two more cells. But what happens if I go up even higher? I go to 12S. Well, this is, oh, I marked that wrong at the top left hand. So basically this is 12S. You can see it there on the chart. I forgot to change it on my slide. So this is a 12S setup. My watts are 4224, which is over the 3100 watts. The amps are 103, which are way over the uh, uh, 80 amps of the speed controller. So essentially, as you go up in that voltage, you're upping your amps. And that's just the way it is. So I hope this makes sense, everybody. So what I'm going to do here is pop in back here. So something I want to explain, though, and it's about the capacity of batteries. And I've done a lot of testing on this, and it's hard to explain the results. But I know those results are factual. Um, if you want a longer flight time and you can add cells, keep in mind each time you add a cell, if it's a 5,000 milliamp pack, each cell is the 5,000. So if you add um, another cell, you're adding more uh, capacity. Now I like to put things in parallel, that way I'm not upping the voltage. So if you have 5,000 uh, milliamps, and you have, uh, how do I say this? Let's say you got two 5,000 milliamp packs and you're putting it in series and you got 10S in series now, okay? 
Then you take another two batteries, put them in series, and put those in parallel. That's the 10S2P. If your system could handle 12S without over wadding or over amping, you actually are adding capacity. Okay. Me personally, if you're just building a fun fly airplane, none of this really matters. Just pick the motor that's going to turn the size of prop you need. Make sure that the ESC can turn the motor without over amping or the motor going over in watts. And make sure you put the right size battery, four cell, five, six, whatever, to get to the target amps and watts you want. Now, when you go to these e calcs, especially the one on Castle, if you know how to set that up, it's really, really accurate if you're wanting to design an airplane. You can put in your wingspan, uh, the square inches of the wing, your weight, and then you can put in the, the motor, the speed controller, battery, and prop. And you start playing around until you kind of find that sweet spot of what you're wanting your airplane to do. Okay? So I hope this makes a lot of sense, everybody. I mean, I, and I might may have not have said this exactly right. I hate getting into the math because um, it doesn't matter. Not when you got these e-calculators or you got other people that can help you set up your system. I could probably help 80% of you, 90% of you set up a system. Um, and if I couldn't do it, I've got a friend, Berger, who is, I think, the absolute wizard at setting up electrical systems. And he does it for not just the hobby, but commercial uses. And I'm not sure if he's done any military, but he's, um, he's touched all of it. And he's uh, a genius at it. But I hope this answers some of those questions on how you set this up, okay? If you have questions, you can always reach out to me through uh, either my Facebook or YouTube um, and get my email. I very rarely ever answer on Facebook through Messenger just because there's 10 million people trying to sell me an island down in the Bahamas somewhere. But uh, yeah, if you got any questions, always reach out to me. I'm not saying I know it all and I'm an expert because I hate the word expert, but through trial and error and testing, everything you've seen here are things that I have actually touched and done, okay? So everybody have an awesome evening and rock on and be safe and see you next time.